Next up on our Wildlife Conservation Center tour is the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. This is our only rabbit in Ohio. So when you look out into your yard or just about anywhere, they're all over the place. This should be what you see. Um, of course, we also have the snowshoe hare in Ohio, uh, but hares have some differences from rabbits and they are critically endangered here in Ohio. So the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit that we see all the time running around our yards, unfortunately it is baby season, so finding nests, this is it. Now, if you see something that looks different, it may be that a domestic rabbit has gotten loose for one reason or another. Um, but our resident Eastern Cottontail Rabbit at the Wildlife Conservation Center she looks a little bit different. So Bonicula is our resident uh, ambassador and she is an albino. So she doesn't have pigment or color, um, normal color of her skin, her fur, and her eyes. So that is why she is this bright white color. She doesn't look anything like what we would picture uh, with the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit, but she is. So in the wild, an animal uh, that is albino can survive. If it's thriving and doing okay on its own, then you know we don't catch them for that reason alone. But she came in as a baby, and because she already is an albino, um, that puts her at a disadvantage. She can't camouflage, she can't hide from predators, and it puts her at a greater risk for skin cancers because she doesn't have that protection. So uh, of course they are plant eaters. We see them all the time gobbling up those clover and dandelion and violets that are in our yard. Uh, you can see her stack of alfalfa hay there. Um, and it's baby season, so you're probably seeing them all the time. So if we take a look here, uh, in her enclosure. This is her indoor enclosure. Um, Bonicula, being an eastern cottontail rabbit, um, they're a little high strung. They are at the bottom of the food chain, so they're always, always watching out for predators or animals that might want to eat them. So it's a slow transition for her to be in her outdoor enclosure where she will eventually feel comfortable. So we can see we have piles of food around this cage. We have bins to hide in. We have water and tunnels and shelves. And she really does take advantage of this entire cage. So we can see them outside. Um, you may not see an albino, um, but they are out there. And this is our native rabbit. So next up, we have Oh, one of my favorites, it's oh. Woodchuck Norris. So the Woodchuck is also known as the Groundhog or the Whistle Pig. I love the Whistle Pig. They are very whistly and grunty, actually. Um, this is actually our largest squirrel in Ohio. So uh, it's a ground squirrel. They eat plants, of course. Uh, eating is one of his favorite pastimes. Uh, this is what Chuck Norris's time inside. So being that they are a true hibernator, we bring him inside for the winter for his safety where we can monitor him. Um, but he does have an outside enclosure you can visit him in as well. So that extensive tunnel system, they're very good at digging. Of course, that's their shelter um, away from the elements, the weather, the wind, the rain, and the snow. But it's also their protection. They're usually not that far away um, from an entrance to that hole. Now, our chance to see Woodchuck Norris is during his target training. So he's... Um, He's a little protective of his house, which I understand, I can't blame him. Um, but our video that we have for you today is his target training. Yeah, so target training um, is something that, it looks adorable, but it has a lot of great purposes. So what you're seeing him do is he's trained to touch his nose to that ball. And he gets a special treat that he only gets when he's doing target training. His is Fruit Loops. Um, so he only gets that as a reward when he does the behaviors that he's being asked to do. So he's very excited to do those behaviors. Now, my favorite, which he's about to show, is when he stands up on his back legs. And that seems like it's just super adorable, but it serves a great purpose for us. By, by getting him to stand up on his back legs, he's showing us his whole belly. 
which means we can check and see if he has any injuries, if there's anything going on with his fur, um, without causing any stress to him. And we can use that to help get animals into their carriers and get them to vet trips and anything else that we need to do with them. So it's really a great way to keep them, keep their brains busy, but uh, keep low stress for them. Absolutely. Um, and those are our plantating mammals. Awesome.